you're new to 3D printing, you will quickly find that many models require supports. And uh, that can feel kind of scary, but I don't think it should be. I've been 3D printing supported miniatures for a long time now. I figured I'd share some tips that I've learned along the way for those of you who might be struggling. So let's do it. Hi there, Danny the 3D Printing DM, and welcome to 3D Printing Tabletop, a channel where we cover all things 3D printing for your tabletop games. Learning to use supports is one of those skills in 3D printing that opens up so many options in the 3D printing world. For example, it's allowed me and my players, my table, to enjoy models by people like Miguel Zavala, who's modeled the whole monster manual, but you need supports for probably every single one of those minis. For some of you, the info in this video might be common knowledge, but uh, struggles with supports was something I struggled with at first. And it's also one of the most common questions that I see online is people asking about them, especially in regards to 3D printing minis and terrain, which is just kind of its own little world inside the world of 3D printing. So let's start with the basics. What are supports? Well, when you're 3D printing stuff, your 3D printer builds the model one layer at a time with either filament or resin. Uh, let's use this Dragonborn Captain as a reference. Do you notice anything particular about it? It has overhangs and they aren't connected to anything, right? So when your printer tries to print from the bottom up, it can lead to failures if it doesn't have anything to build on. Failures like missing limbs, chest and arm cavities, missing horns, etc. Or in the case of resin, flattened parts, warped parts, or completely missing parts. But like I mentioned before, the key is to always make sure your prints have something to build on or build on if you're doing resin. And here's how you do this. Most of the time you can generate support using your slicer, which is a software that creates the code that tells your 3D printer what to do. So what your slicer is doing is it's looking for the parts of the print that might need supports. And to see your supports in Kira, for example, go to view, select layer view, and then make sure to enable show helpers. You're gonna find very quickly that this is not a perfect science, right? Slicers don't always detect overhangs. One of the quickest ways to fix this is to adjust the angle threshold. And what the angle threshold is, it tells the slicer what angles to look for when generating supports. So lowering the angle threshold generates more supports and raising the angle threshold makes less supports. Now the angle threshold I've seen for most printers that I've used at least is anywhere between 50 to 60 degrees. And I'm gonna generate my supports around 55 degrees just to be safe. So auto-generated supports do work really well sometimes. And sometimes they work a little too well. But when you're printing harder prints, and I consider minis harder prints, failures do happen, happen to me all the time. And uh, it's good to understand why, because it's a common mistake for people new to 3D printing to think, oh, there's something wrong with my settings, or there's something wrong with my printer, or there's something wrong maybe with the model, when sometimes it's just, there was a lack of supports. And other times, yes, it is the model. So here are a few things you can look for and do to really up your support game. First thing you wanna do is always check the final slice, the G-code, whatever you wanna call it. Let's say there is no issues with the model and it's perfectly fine. You know, you see a bunch of supports, it might be tempting to say, ah, we're good. You no, know, you cannot do that. This is something you're gonna wanna take a look at, close look at, it's worth the extra five minutes to see if maybe your auto generation missed some supports or maybe you can reorient it to be in a better position, so on and so forth. To fix this step, a lot of people add custom supports which it can be a really involved process or sometimes it's, it's simple. Most important lesson of all is that support failures can ruin a print, but usually support failures are very manageable and you can't even tell when it's on the table or after you've fixed it. But still, it doesn't mean that we shouldn't take steps to avoid it, right? If you're interested in seeing one of the ways I fix my failed prints check out this video it's just for you thank you for watching happy printing and happy gaming